I mentioned that we're coming to you from the Triumph of Ag Expo here in Omaha. It was here at the show we had the chance to catch up with Darren Newsom of Darren Newsom Analysis. The Ukraine situation continues to dominate the conversation around the Ukraine markets. We began the discussion with Darren by breaking down the extreme volatility we've seen in all segments of the grain market. We're joined by Darren Newsom of Darren Newsom Analysis. Darren, great to see you. Oh, thanks for having me on again, Bryce. Nice to be back out. Well, let's talk about these markets and the word volatile obviously comes to mind to describe this. Try to bring some sense of what's going on. All the major markets are have been trading in, in some crazy, crazy trends that we've seen, right? Yeah, you know, the biggest thing that we've got here is we had a tight supply and demand situation in so many commodities even before uh, Mr. Putin decided to invade uh, Ukraine. So all that has done, as, as you mentioned, is amped up the volatility. So now you've got all kinds of world buying coming into a situation where commodities were already tight supply in relation to demand. And volatility has just skyrocketed. I mean, we're seeing it across the board, almost across sectors. The only one that really isn't following is livestock. And that's because, again, we have different fundamentals there. But almost everything else, we're seeing incredible jumps, moves, all tied to volatility and money coming into the markets. Let's try to cover some ground here uh, on this report, Darren. Last week, USDA held the annual Outlook Forum. A lot of our viewers know your stance on, on how these numbers come out, but obviously that was largely overshadowed by the situation with Ukraine. What do you make uh, of USDA coming out with those numbers, and should producers take any stock of any of them? Absolutely not. They're completely irrelevant. Uh, they're completely meaningless. The numbers basically a, a colossal waste of time. And I know a lot of folks spend a lot of time talking about them. It's an utter waste of time. There's so many more things going on right now. We can look at the markets themselves for all the information we need to know about supply, demand, new crop, old crop, you know, the situation in Ukraine, the situation around the world. USDA adds nothing to it. I, I didn't understand why the focus was put on it last week. And certainly uh, it'll go away in time. Let's get to a producer question here. Daryl in Southeast Nebraska asks, how much of the current rally is hype over the war and how much is based on reality? Your yeah, thoughts? That, that is an absolute, that's a great question because I don't think there's any hype. I think there's the reality of what's going on in the war. Number one, Russia and Ukraine combined account for about 30% of global wheat exports. Plus Russia by itself is the third largest uh, crude oil producer in the world and accounting for 10% of production. So the fact that we've got that those commodities basically being taken out of the equation, it just turns everything upside down. And we were already, as I mentioned, we were already tight supply in relation to demand for both. And I don't usually say that for wheat, but if we look at what uh, the cash markets here in the United States are doing and what the future spreads are showing us, that wheat is in a globally tight situation. Now it's much more so. And crude oil spreads have been, the crude oil forward curves have been inverted for months. Uh, and that tells us supplies are very tight in relation to demand. And all this did was make it that much more volatile. You mentioned crude oil. They posted seven year highs, I believe, at this point at, at 110 early on Wednesday. Where do you see that market going? Have to assume up? It, it, it almost has to go up. Again, the, the forward curves are inverted. But one of the things that's kind of gone unmentioned is uh, President Biden on last Thursday, so a week ago Thursday, when he is uh, announcing some of the initial rounds of sanctions, said something to the effect of countries that back this aggressive move will be stained by association. And we saw China's immediate reaction to that on that Friday. But what we've seen since then is uh, energy companies, Western energy companies backing away from Russia. So what's actually happened here is in the crude oil market without putting sanctions on Russia, on its oil and gas, that would have driven the market to $150, $200 per barrel at least, We've got sanctions, de facto sanctions put on that is slowly raising prices. So I think it bought the U.S. and the world some time. But given the situation, given the tight supply and demand, yeah, I think it's going to continue to go higher. So we talked about the fact that USDA came out with their numbers, predicting some acreage as well as yield. You say that doesn't necessarily matter. But let me get to this question, Darren. Paul in Central Nebraska asks, do you think we see more acres being planted to row crops this year? And if so, where do those acres come from? He asks, would that be CRP? You know, there's there's a chance that some CRP acres could come out because if we look, there's just not going to be enough acres of anything. Uh, we're not going to have enough soybean acres, corn acres, spring wheat acres, cotton acres. So they may pull them from some other areas. All of these crops could be viewed as profitable. If I'm looking at what the most bullish supply and demand situation is for new crop, according to spreads, it's probably spring wheat. Cotton's not far behind. Uh, soybeans are certainly right there. 
but I think there's also this, if we can plant corn, I think the U.S. likes to plant corn. Then the question comes, what about fertilizer? What, are, what seeds are going to be available? So there's a lot of questions to answer, uh, a lot of questions yet to play out uh, here over the course of the spring. We just don't have all the information yet. The only thing we know is the markets are telling us there's not going to be enough of any of them. Final word is yours. What piece of advice would you like to leave our viewers with today? You know, I'd be very careful in these situations. We could certainly make some new crop sales. Absolutely. These are great prices, but keep your powder dry. Keep plenty of powder dry for later. We have no idea, given the type of situation that we have right here, supply and demand, how high these markets can go. It could end today. It could end tomorrow. It could end next week. We don't know that. So sell a little bit when you're comfortable with it, but keep plenty of powder dry for later. Darren, thanks for coming out to the Farm Show. Thank you, Bryce.